Scariest Verse in the Bible. In his book titled, The Man God Uses, Oswald Smith said, it is either the Bible keeps you from sinning or sin we keep you from the Bible. What a profound statement. There is no way anyone can hide from the reality of scripture if studied with the right perspective. There is something supernatural about the word of God. It has the ability to expose mankind. No other book in the history of mankind exposes people like the Bible. The Bible probes and pokes people in every aspect of their life. This is why the Bible is not a loved book. The truth hurts. The truth is something that human beings struggle to accept at times, and when you open the Bible, you and I are all confronted with the truth. Now the topic of the scariest verse in the Bible is something that is debated because it is subjective. Some people state that Hebrews 9.27 is the scariest verse because it points to the reality that death is coming for all mankind. Hebrews 9.27 And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this is the judgment. Some people state that Matthew 7.21.23 is the scariest verse in the Bible because hearing the words, depart from me, must be terrifying. Now today, I want to point out a verse that is also argued to be one of the scariest verses, and that is Luke 8.17. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Luke 8.17 is one of the scariest scriptural passages, and it happens to be a direct statement from Jesus Christ. In case you have a Bible with the words of Jesus printed with red ink, you will easily identify this passage to be the very words of Christ. Jesus said that there is nothing secret that will not be manifested openly, and there is nothing hidden that will not be brought to limelight. The heaviness of these words can only be unraveled through deep thought. This is really scary. You might not have considered that the very things you do in the deepest secret are not hidden at all. This can be very unsettling for people who are into evil businesses and activities. The very thoughts of your heart are not hidden from God. If God can capture your thought, how much more the things you do. There is nothing you do that is outside of God's sight. Listen, there is an eye that sees into the thickest darkness. Therefore, everything we do in secret will be brought to the limelight. We live in a world where people hide in the dark to achieve a lot of evil works. Several meetings are held behind closed doors to plan activities of wickedness. Backdoor operations and under-the-table deals are the order of the day in our current time. Crooked plans are often performed out of the public eye with the hopes of never being discovered. If it's in the dark, no one sees, and you can get away with it, or at least you think you can. However, the word of Christ explicitly tells us that everything done behind closed doors shall be revealed. Put straight, I want you to realize that any evil you have done secretly in times past is known and will be brought to light. You may think you have been getting away with them, or that you will continue to get away with them, but such a thought or assumption will betray you. Luke 8.17 is a warning to you and me. Luke 8.17 is a warning to people who live double lives. Luke 8.17 is a warning that it will come out. Allow me to be honest and to preach the undiluted truth. This may offend people, but I would rather you be offended and enter heaven than you not be offended and fall into the depths of hell. There is too much, way too much feel-good fluffy gospel. The gospel message instructs us to depart from all secret sins and double lives. There are men right now who are listening to me, who have a wife and a child or multiple children, and they have another family on the side, another family in another town or in another state that no one knows about. They are living a secret life, a double life, a life of adultery. They are pulling the wool over their wives and loved ones' eyes and hiding this double life, hiding it from their friends, hiding it from their pastor. They have a whole family elsewhere no one knows about, living comfortably in adultery, hiding this secret. And there are women, women who are listening to me right now, who have workplace romances that have crossed the line. Or there are some who are still in love with their ex-boyfriends or their high school sweethearts and they have recently connected with. And every so often they step out of the marriage and no one knows about it. Luke 8.17 is a warning to you and me. Luke 8.17 is a warning to people who live double lives. Luke 8.17 is a warning 
that it will come out. There are people going to places that they shouldn't go to in the darkness of night. Secrets are something everyone has. Even children have secrets. The secrets that many adults have are often secret sinful acts. Since the beginning of mankind, there have been secret acts that men and women have tried to hide. There are people who go places secretly, places where they can perform all types of sexual immorality and commit unthinkable acts there. They give themselves over to the desires of the flesh secretly, and no one knows. Pastors do this, elders and deacons do this, and even saints do this. Even unbelievers do this. But allow Luke 8.17 to be a warning. Luke 8.17 For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Never trust yourself. When I am preaching this message, I am preaching to myself also. I am not above the temptations of this life. I have to fight to resist the temptations of sin. And one way you can keep yourself from living a double life or living a life of secret sins is to never, ever trust yourself. Never, ever think you are above sin or a particular struggle. When I travel, I try my best to ensure I am never, ever alone. I try to always have witnesses, someone who holds me accountable. I can speak for myself and how I protect myself. I have no female friends outside of my mother and sister and lovely wife. I am never left alone with a woman that is not my relative. You may say that is extreme. You may say that is old-fashioned. But that is how I protect myself. If there is one man I do not trust, that is me. Look at what the works of the flesh are. Look at what is in the very DNA of you and I's body. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You don't need a demon or an evil spirit to commit adultery or fornication or uncleanliness or lasciviousness. It is in your genes. It is in your DNA. Protect yourself. Put barriers in your life that should not be crossed. Maybe I am old-fashioned. Maybe I am outdated in my thinking, but a lot of men fall when they trust themselves. 1 Corinthians 10.12 Therefore let the one who thinks he stands watch out if he does not fall. Don't ever try to live a double life. You may hide successfully from people, but you cannot hide from God. Everything you do in secret, all your activities carried out behind closed doors will be revealed before all people. If God should expose everything you've been doing in secret, what consequences do you think it will have on you? Can you be proud of the things you do behind closed doors? You might think no one knows them, but the assumption is false. God knows all things and he will bring all things to light. You can hide certain aspects of your life from your spouse, but you cannot hide anything from God. How can you hide from the God that created your eyes? If he created your eyes, will he not see? Don't allow the devil to deceive you into believing that your secret life is hidden. Let's consider the following verse from Psalm 139 to establish the word of Christ in Luke 8.17. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me, Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Verse 1 and 2. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art here. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art here. Verse 7-8. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. Verse 11 and 12. The condition of your heart is as open to God as your physical look. God knows every bit of thought that comes into your heart. Whether you go down into the sea or you ascend into the clouds, the omnipresence of God will envelop you. According to the psalmist, both day and night are alike before the Lord. God sees you behind closed doors as clearly as he sees you in open. God sees you in the dark as clearly as he sees you in the day. God knows everything you plan and the intent of every action you take. He will judge every one of them 
by bringing them to the limelight. You remember Achan? He took of the accursed things of Jericho and thought he had gotten away with them until God brought his secret sin to limelight. Consequently, he perished with his family. You remember Gehazi? His covetousness made him to accept what his master had rejected. He took secret gifts and thought he was smart in hiding them. But the eyes of the prophet followed him. Unfortunately, he got leprosy of Naaman. Don't play smart with God. Don't attempt to live a double life. Don't think that your activities are hidden. Child of God, desist from every secret sin and evil practice. There is nothing done in the dark that will not be revealed. This is really scary. However, every good work and secret labors you have done for the Lord will also be brought to limelight.